నమో తస్సే భగవతో అర్హతో సమ్మా సంబుద్ధస్సే నమో తస్సే భగవతో అర్హతో సమ్మా సంబుద్ధస్సే నమో తస్సే భగవతో అర్హతో సమ్మా సంబుద్ధస్సే dear friends in dhamma we were discussing vetan pasana sutta one of the very interesting suttas particularly for the vipassana meditationers vipassana meditators vipassana practitioners and uh, as you all can remember here actually buddha gives 16 themes 16 directions to the long term or a kind of maturing type of vipassana so one may start with various typical vipassana practices but at one point they have to emerge into uh, any of these uh, paths we would say say so for example one may start with the uh, dhatu manasikara just to recognize various element characteristics in one's body and slowly slowly understanding their true nature and uh, could be able to arrive some state where the mind get uh freed and attached not grasping the whole body and probably he may be able to relinquish the feelings not attach with them not attach with perceptions not attach or caught up with various thoughts mental formations and able to maintain a kind of a detached mind from there onwards probably he may have to come up with any of these kind of uh, methods these kind of themes we are a fairly matured vipassana yogi may recognize okay this should be the path this should be what i have to do now uh this is the decision that i have to take so this is a direction that i have to move forward and such uh, 16 directions buddha has shown here for starting with the four noble truths understanding four noble truths and uh, trying to develop them trying to further develop them and then recognizing various acquisitions using which actually we have created a self a person our personality our ego and recognizing them and slowly abandoning them so that the personality view is abandoned suffering is abandoned and then understanding ignorance so ignorance being the cause of suffering and then slowly abandoning ignorance and then uh, uh basically uh trying to develop wisdom so that no more ignorance instead the wisdom is there so the wisdom takes care of abandoning or alleviating the suffering and then volitional activities sankhara so whatever suffering arises that arises because of sankhara because of the formations so stilling all formations abandoning all formations stopping all formations is another path another direction that buddha shows us and so that becomes another theme of this practice of the vipassana and then consciousness the typical condition consciousness always either establish on the form establish on feelings establish on various perceptions and establish on various mental formations or verbal formations physical formations now if we are able to cease that kind of uh, consciousness and pave the path towards an unestablished consciousness unmanifested kind of consciousness so that becomes another path that one can recognize so as one continues so consciousness being aware of the consciousness the activity of consciousness and how Uh, it is trying to delude us and slowly abandoning such consciousness avoiding such consciousness and uh, diving into the unmanifested kind of consciousness so that becomes one's path so that is the fifth theme that buddha explained and then contact being one of the root causes for feelings perceptions and mental formations one can recognize okay contact is the root cause of suffering i better minimize contact i better avoid contact contact in the sense uh, better penetrate contact so he is developing a path which is uh, capable of ceasing the contact so that's the noble eightfold path so that becomes one's uh, further development of the practice and then feelings 
so this is actually another path one can start even fairly from the beginning understanding various different kinds of feelings how they are rising and passing away and uh, further and further understanding them helps one to detach from the feelings and uh, so alleviating various feelings and uh, being detached from feelings becomes the continuous goal in one's practice so this is another theme that buddha explained in this dvaita anupassana sutta craving craving as the cause of suffering so that is the second noble truth the cause of suffering is nothing but craving understanding that abandoning craving letting go of craving becomes one's direction in one's practice so that is the other eighth kind of direction aim that buddha explained clinging grasping so this is the another area that one can understand okay mind tends to grasp things mind tends to hold things rather than abandoning things rather than letting go of things mind has a tendency to grasp things holding things harboring things so that causes a lot of suffering so one's theme of practice is to avoid any kind of grasping stop grasping to anything in the world as was the repeatedly highlighted in the satipatthana sutta to maintain the mind without any sort of grasping so that becomes one's further development in vipassana practice so that is uh, the ninth theme buddha has explained in this dvaita anupassana sutta then instigation at one moment one may understand okay again and again i am developing one thing and abandoning another thing and i am becoming something basically i want to become uh, one with the second jhana so okay you let go of the first jhana you attain second jhana and i want to attain the third jhana so you let go of second jhana and attain third jhana so likewise all the other mental states one desiring and then one achieve it but letting go of the previous one so how to stop this process so that there is no future uh becoming and simply letting go of the present presently available feelings and perceptions so that there is nothing more to do rather to stop completely stop maintain the mind in a stillness very closer to that uh, stilling of all formations sabba sankara samatha he also actually buddha giving it from a different angle to stop all different kinds of effort stop all the kind of instigations initiations so that mind is completely satisfied contented in the present moment so that becomes one's path for the development of vipassana the nutrients four nutrients are uh, there but the explained and nutrients if we are not properly seen properly understood so that can cause a lot of suffering by attaching to them holding to them so one may decide okay i need to understand nutrients i have to be careful of them i have to penetrate them so that i am not being driven by them so that becomes one's path then agitation so as a result of craving there is a lot of agitation available in the mind so one can recognize agitation and now his uh, goal is to minimize the mental agitation available in the mind in order to minimize mental agitation actually he has to let go of craving so they have some interdependencies anyway understanding the agitation available and that as the cause of suffering is another theme that buddha explained as the 12th theme in this dvaita uh, anupassana sutta dependency so we are our minds are so dependent either holding the say rupa khand or either holding or attaching to vedana either holding to sanya either holding to or dependent on perceptions dependent on consciousness so likewise the consciousness is constantly dependent on something now as one move forward one may understand okay if i am dependent on something which is so vulnerable so fragile i am going to suffer so let me become independent without being dependent 
no let me become independent so one is trying to maintain one's mind in a independent state freed state so that becomes one's path of practice and last time actually we discussed about the 14th one where are form and formless states so more than the typical mundane material realm material experience one may desire in the form jahana material jahana and so one attained that and that is another blissful state and here more than that with the promotes the arupa jahana where are the there is no any kind of a friction coming from the forms sight sound smell taste tangibles instead the mind is completely opened boundless so that one's freedom is uh, fairly high more than that now would they emphasize the nirodha the cessation so that there is no further and further rising and passing away rather one's mind is completely stopped no more mental formations no more established consciousness everything is in a cooled state so cessation being the final goal maintaining one's mind in cessation nirodha so this is the path that would they explain has the 14th uh, type of perspective 14 kind of aim that one can direct one's vipassana at a matured level now we can discuss the 15th one yam bikave sadevakasa lokasa samarakasa sabrahmakasa sassamana brahmaniya pajaya sadeva manusaya idang satchanti upachid upanijjhayita tadariyam tang ariyanam etang musati yathabhutam sammapanyaya sudittham ayang ekanu passana so basically it means so there are different groups of people there are maras there are brahmas there are various ascetics there are typical brahmins humans devas so different different kinds of clans different kinds of groups now all of them regard something as true this is there this is the truth this is available this is available so they are telling like that but buddha mentioned but for the noble ones who has seen that same thing with the direct knowledge they say this is false and uh, on the other hand so likewise different groups of people are there beings are there and they may say okay this is false but the noble ones have seen it well with correct wisdom that this is the truth now there's a complete contradiction here complete opposite views are here so the mundane people are saying mundane beings are saying something is true noble people are saying okay it is not true it is false on the other hand mundane people are saying okay this is false and nobles are saying this is truth so this is a very very interesting way that buddha is presenting this how kind of a difference that one can go through in this kind of a uh, argument so and there there we can see i mean, it's a kind of a dramatic change is there highlighted by the buddha so the majority of the people who are not the noble ones they are simply mundane uninstructed worldlings they simply say okay this is true but the noble ones say no it is simply a falsity now anattani attamani passa lokang sadevaka nivittham nama roopasmin idam satchanti manyati behold the world together with its devas conceiving a self in what is non self settled upon name and form they conceive this is true now actually starting with the fairly profound teaching here so probably you know that the uh, relationship between consciousness and name and form vijnana and nama roopa now typical experience is that uh, something is represented in the consciousness and to that we get entangled and what is represented there is what we call as name and form so name and form is always present and uh, we consider it as true it is the it is what available 
and so we consider it as true and we simply easily get attached to that hold to that and personify that we add a label to that we recognize that so all that uh, being developed as a result of this kind of an entanglement so name and form and consciousness they are like a whirlpool helping each other circulating helping interrelated and that causes actually to activation of six sense bases that causes activation of different kinds of contact that causes to generate some sort of feelings that feelings are being desired craved after as a result of that the becoming the, the sorry the the upadana happens the clicking grasping happens now you are at a new state a new mental state the bhava happens kind of an existence is there so you feel that you are existing you are someone you are existing so bhava is there you are born to that now ultimately everything collapses everything decays everything change and you get into a kind of a trap and you are being uh, suffering now this is how the suffering is generated but we can see that at the very root there is a very interesting relationship between consciousness and name and form so this relationship is explained in the mahanidana sutta and uh, nalakapana sutta so likewise so this uh, interdependency between name and form and consciousness is a very subtle point explained in the dhamma and usually our minds are trapped in the name and form always something is represented in the mind either there is a perception either there is a feeling either there is a kind of a thought so basically we get trapped into this name and form and there are various images pictures taken from the the physical world and that they are so those images are being shown in the consciousness so that is another way of representing name and forms we get trapped so basically so we can't even think of a mind which is completely free from name and form so name and form become uh, really a trap assume that you are wearing uh, spectacles and that uh, there's a kind of a scar in the spectacle if you didn't notice that probably you see through that and you think that a kind of an object is there in the far away place it may be a kind of a huge uh, maybe a stone a kind of a rock but probably if you get a chance probably you can notice that your spectacle has a scar kind of a, a dust dust particle but if we didn't notice that probably we may think okay that's uh, something really available outside so this 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 kind of a thing happen within our mind so when we see a far away object so it creates a kind of an image in our retina and then it will be inverted and recognized through the uh, brain and it gives a different representation to our mind and mind may think it is there an object is there over there so likewise actually what we see is simply a illusion an image appearing in our eye but it can be generated with a, a huge something which is available outside and becomes something true something uh, say valuable maybe a permanent thing we get the wrong perception of permanency because we can't see the changing nature altering nature of the things of the phenomena and so we think okay it is there it is permanent it is beautiful it can give a lot of satisfaction so likewise we get on to what we call as the vipallas we are kind of distortions or inversions happen within ourselves so buddha discuss about four types of inversions 
So we can't understand the true reality. Instead, we get a distorted view. Aniche bikave nichanti sanya ipallasu, chitta ipallasu, ditti ipallasu. So basically, what is impermanent, we perceive as permanent. This is how we perceive. And uh, as a result of that, that is how we start to think. And then our thinking is fairly distorted. And based on that thinking, we come to a conclusion, a decision. So that too is completely inverted, completely distorted. So there are three levels, therefore, Buddha explained here in this sutta, where at the very perception level, perceiving level, so we get into a trap, we get into a wrong type of perception. It's a kind of distorted, wrong perception. The next level is the chitta vipallasa, where we start thinking based on that sort of wrong data, wrong perception, wrong recognition. Now, after thinking for some time, okay, we decide, okay, I, this is this is what they are. This is something. This so and so. I have to do this. So you come to a kind of a conclusion. But based on wrong data, based on wrong thoughts, wrong thinking. So your decision, your conclusion also is distorted. So likewise, this is... Uh, some sort of a distortion that is going on throughout our life. So we get the wrong notion of permanency. We get a wrong notion of satisfaction. We get a wrong notion of self. So when there is no self, we, we think, okay, there is something solid. There is someone. There is a person. There is a human. There is a man. There is a woman. There is a child. That is my son, there is my daughter, there is my husband, there is my wife. So now we get into various different kinds of perceptions because we think there is a person. Really we are, there is no person, there is no being. It's a different aggregates working together due to various causes and conditions, but we attribute a person to that, a self to that. So this, uh, this is how we operate. We typically think there is a person over there and there is a person over here also, that is I am. So I am seeing you, I am talking to you, so I am here. So I get the wrong perception over here also, thinking that there is a self here, myself. So I am here myself and you are there, so you are self. So we are attributing a self to both sides, either to the internal or to the external. So basically, this is how the whole world is operating. So they are affirming the availability of a self. Now, when something is not really beautiful, we still get another perception, thinking that is beautiful. And... Uh, Based on that, we start thinking that is also distorted and ultimately we come to a conclusion that is also distorted. So, asube bhikkave subhanti sanya ipallasu, chitta ipallasu, ditti ipallasu. And basically, so this is how our whole way of thinking, our whole way of operation, operating is coming to being. So basically that means we are in a kind of an illusion. So, uh, so Buddha explains this in detail uh, in the Mulapariyaya Sutta how the uh, a typical worldly being is uh, going through his experience. In the big Kavya Sutta, Aputu Janu Ariya Nangada Savi Ariya Dhamma Sakovido Ariya Dhamma Avinito Sapurisa Nangada Savi Sapurisa Dhamma Sakovido Sapurisa Dhamma Avinito. So that basically means it's an untrained worldly person. He has no regard about the Dhamma. He is completely unskilled in the Dhamma. And he hasn't associated any true people, noble people. So he is basically quite blind. So Pataving Patavito Sanjanati. So basically now he come across something solid. Say he simply see a house. And he simply see a house and he simply recognizes, oh, this is my house. 
పటవీం పటవితో సంజ్ఞాత్త పటవీం మన్యతి సో ఆఫ్టర్ హీ రికగ్నైజ్ పర్సీవ్డ్ ఇట్ యాజ్ అ హౌస్ నౌ హీ కన్సీవ్ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ యాజ్ ది హౌస్ సో బేసికలీ ప్రొబబ్లీ నౌ సేఫ్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇఫ్ హీ సీ అన్ ఇమేజ్ హిస్ ఫోటో ఓన్ ఫోటో ah this is i am i am there this is myself i am so beautiful suppose that you have a graduation photo and you keep it on your room and once you see that oh this is i am see how smart i am see how in, how handsome i am how pretty i am so basically we immediately attribute a self to that picture and we simply recognize ourselves as a person and what we actually saw is as something solid but we immediately get a wrong perception and probably we may conceive differently pataviya manyati pataving patavito manyati pataving meti manyati so likewise different prepositions are there as the way how you may perceive it so you probably say okay this house is my house i am the one build that house i i Uh, sold this house it was my house but now it is not no more i sold this house probably you might say okay uh, someone might steal this house from myself so likewise with respect to house you can uh, develop different kinds of thoughts different kinds of perceptions and uh, this is how we start thinking conceiving some sort of self is there and kind of a relationship is there an object is there i am here so i am thinking about that object which is available this is myself this is this is mine this is something i belong so likewise we can go on and on thinking pers- uh, conceiving proliferating like that overthinking about it and buddha ask and he delights in that he delights in this particular object assume that is the beautiful house and you spend a lot of money you spend a lot of your time now you appreciate your say task and you are enjoying that you are delighted about what you have done say uh, you were able to build the house before the economic crisis before everything become so uh, expensive now you are quite happy okay i did it on right time now if i was uh, i didn't do that on that time then i it's a dream that i would develop a build construct this kind of a house so you are so happy about your uh, say smart activity that you had uh, you have done uh, before everything increased now recently in sri lanka they have added a vat to many construction material so everything was uh, now so expensive but if assume that you were uh, so fortunate to do the whole thing before that so you are succeeded in completion of the project and you are done you are so happy about your achievement you are delighted about it you are thinking how you are doing how you have invested and etc etc so this is how we think and buddha is asking why is that aparinyatan tassati vadam because he didn't fully understand the situation for him there is a house for him there is a person there is a self who belong that house so likewise so buddha explained so many different possibilities uh, maybe about the water maybe about various watery things fluid things uh, various uh, say fiery things so likewise it's a huge area buddha explained taking 24 examples in this muda pariyaya sutta to give us Uh, a thorough understanding about our experiences we already discussed mula pariyaya sutta under the sutta teachings uh, at the very early stages uh, we have discussed that probably you can rec- you can find it from the web and you can listen to that again the recording now even nibbana he can perceive in different wrong ways because he hasn't understood nibbana so he can even proliferate on nibbana he can think imagine conceive about nibbana now this is how the typical worldings are operating now buddha explain how a sekapuggala a trainee 
a trainer a trainee in the higher training is uh, developing himself so he is not a typical mundane person he has gone through some practice he has associated true people he has listened to the dhamma he has learned the dhamma he is practicing dhamma and he has achieved something basically he has penetrated the uh, typical conventional things now he know something deep he might have kept his attention to his body and uh, maintain fair amount of mindfulness concentration and balance the effort using which he was able to recognize the transient nature of all different kinds of elements and that's a kind of a thorough understanding now he possess probably he can inferentially understand the same nature available in the outside as well so the whole physical world probably he may understand okay it's completely fragile inconstant transient even though they give the kind of a perception as permanent but actually they are not permanent they are in constant and they are in a continuous transformation continuous arising and passing away so this is a kind of a direct knowledge that he is experiencing it is not mere for uh, merely from the thinking or logical reasoning it's not merely coming from someone else's knowledge rather he himself has penetrated this truth he understood this so this is why it is emphasized as abhinya abhijanati patavim patavito abhijanati so he he see things in a more deep way the conventional conventionality is house yes but he has seen that all the physical phenomena are impermanent going through some transients now when one see like this still by the way uh, there could be a tendency still available in the mind to proliferate to conceive now he is advising himself so i should not conceive should not conceive should not conceive because mind has that tendency to conceive create a self over here and creating an object over there and based on that start conceiving that's possible and that that tendency is there so he may recognize that now he is slowly slowly abandoning that concealment abandoning the proliferation minimizing proliferation calming down the mind relaxing the mind silence in the mind so that he is no more conceiving so he is training himself now he is training that's why he is called a trainee because he is he he still not fully understood so why he has to do this kind of a training tankisa hetu parinyayan tasati vada so buddha mention okay he has to continue this training because he hasn't fully understood the situation yet now he can buddha then explain about the arahant who has completed the training so there buddha mention patavim patavito abhijanati similarly to the previous one he too understood but here the difference is he fully understood and pataving patavito abhinya ya pataving na manyati now the here term is na manyati he never proliferate he never conceives his mind has become completely still not getting into proliferation not getting into concealment because he has seen it fully he understood it fully na abhinandati there is no any kind of a delight because he understood it totally parinyatam tassati vada so you can see the difference so typically people have that mundane view okay this is there there is house there is my house i am here so this is a typical way of thinking but if we consider an arhant case so he knows okay there is no person here there is no house there he has directly seen that some mere kind of a convention 
knowing that he is maintaining his mind completely still, calm, relaxed, without proliferation. Now, there's a beautiful uh, verse available in the Udana Pali. It's called Udena Sutta. Under the Udena Sutta, Moha Sambandha no Loko, Babha Rupova Dissati. Upadi Sambandha no Balo, Tamasa Parivaritu. Sasati via Kayati Nati Kinchanati. Pasato Nati Kinchanati. Moha Sambandha no Loko. So basically, this whole world is bound with delusion, kind of an ignorance. And Babba Rupa Dissati, the world appears like something, say, permanent, something available, and uh, something solid. Babba Rupa Dissati, its appearance is like that. Upati Sambandha no Balo, Tamasa Parivarito. So the typical worldly person creates himself using various acquisitions as we already discussed and so he is completely bewildered by that. So different kinds of upadis are there, acquisitions are there so that he can easily create a self. And with that he is completely uh, surrounded. Tamasa parivartu, it is like a darkness. For him it is like a darkness surrounded by him, surrounded by him and he is completely uh, bewildered by that. Sasato Vya for, for him everything like uh, eternal existing for ever but Pasato Nati Kinchananti but who see things truly properly clearly there is nothing to hold nothing to attach nothing to possess. This is a very, very interesting way that Buddha puts it here. So, typically our minds are uh, filled with some kind of a uh, view, thinking, okay, this is there. Okay, my son is there, my daughter is there, my father is there, my mother is there, my house is there, my wife is there, my, uh, say, husband is there. So, we have that uh, type of sabbang atti, there is, uh, this, everything exists, all exist. This is the one type of uh, extreme that we have. So for us, okay, this is existing. Things are existing. The world existing, the government existing, the president existing, my wife existing, my husband existing, my brother existing, my sister existing, my car existing, everything exists. And uh, for that actually my upadis, my acquisitions are quite helpful. So I uh, basically use them to, to uh, convince myself, okay, I am existing. I am so and so. I am a solid person. I am an important person. I am something substantial. So there are various upadis, acquisitions we can use to convince ourselves, prove ourselves. So those are available around us and we are using them and we are being blinded. So these upadis are very much like making us completely blind, completely so that we are in a kind of a darkness. So, but when someone is seen through, as we already discussed, say uh, someone is practicing vipassana, so, time to time he may get a thorough understanding, insights are happening, his eyes are opening, and for him, he say, okay, nothing is there. So, I am going to a state where there is nothing. I can't grasp anything. Mind, hold, mind does not hold anything. At that state, I am in complete emptiness. There is nothing there. So, it's a kind of a eye-opening experience for someone. So how I can maintain such kind of a state? While I am, in, I, while I am meditating, okay, I am reaching to this kind of a state, but quite temporary. But still it makes a significant influence to my perception, my way of thinking, my perception. Now, 
if someone is continuing this probably he may come to a thorough understanding okay there is nothing permanent and we have a wrong perception about permanency so as buddha mentioned to kachana so this sabbang attiti is one kind of an extreme sabba natti is another extreme now here natti here means okay uh, we think okay there is nothing so the ultimate sense there is nothing in one sense we can say it is true but here sabba natti emphasizes the uchchedavad where okay there is no one there is nobody and uh, after the death everything collapses everything extinct and that kind of a extremist view is another area that one can uh, particularly the materialist mater- materialist can take but buddha gives a different approach when there is delusion ignorance our minds tends to think okay there is something existing continuing and i am there and that is how the uh whole suffering going to be available on the other hand when there is no ignorance so mind is calm relaxed no more proliferation no more thinking no more wrong thinking so you are simply experience in the present moment and there is no person being created and you are not conceiving so it's a kind of a different approach that with the explain here in this uh, kachana gotha sutta so there buddha say so if we come to another level so buddha mention okay in the kalakarama sutta monks whatever whatsoever in the world with its gods maras and brahmans among the progeny consisting of recluses and brahmins gods and men whatsoever is seen heard sensed cognized attained sought after and pondered over by the mind all that do i know so the way that typical worldlings are thinking talking imagining cognizing sensing all that buddha can understand and on the other hand similarly buddha mentioned so i have fully understood but all that is known to the tathagata but the tathagata has not taken his stand upon it tan tathagato na upattasi so buddha no okay conventionally this is there people are talking like this people are using different languages so conventionally yes we can accept but truly there is nothing there so therefore buddha do not take a stand on it he is not adhering to it he is not holding it is not taking it thinking it is so substantial so important so how he perceive idiko bikkave tathagato datta datta bang dittang na manyati adittang na manyati datta bang na manyati datta rang na manyati so this this teachings are actually so profound and uh, we need some understanding about the dhamma to understand all this what we are talking here actually not the beginner stuff so that's why this whole sutta is for someone who has gone through swaya understanding of the vipassana and some understanding of dhamma is necessary to understand all this and there buddha mention in this kalakarama sutta thus monks the tathagata does not conceive of a visible thing as apart from sight there is a there is a sight there there is a seeing the activity of seeing is there but apart from that he does not conceive of a visible thing an object and then adittang na manyati he does not conceive thinking that i haven't seen or i that based on something unseen again he is not conceiving he is not proliferating that tabban na manyati so thinking that okay it is really worth of seeing i should see it i should plan to see it i should visit there and see it i should go there and see it so you are proliferating 
thinking that it, it is something very important to see. There is no such kind of conceiving proliferation for the Tathagata, to the Arahant. Dattarana Manyati, so this is the most important thing. He does not conceive thinking that there is a seer, seer, a person who is experienced in this uh, whole thing. Thinking that there is a seer, one can uh, start thinking. So I am the one who saw it, I am the one who properly saw it, so I am the one eyewitnessing it, I saw it before you, you can argue like that, thinking that there is a person who is seen. But for the Tathagata to the Arahant, he is not conceiving, thinking there is a person who is experiencing seeing. So similarly Buddha explained this whole scenario to what is heard and to what is, uh, say, uh, sensed by the nose, tongue and the body and to what he has cognized. Vinyata vinyatabbhaṁ vinyatāṁ na manyati avinyatāṁ na manyati vinyatabbhaṁ na manyati vinyatāraṁ na manyati He does not conceive of a cognizable thing as apart from cognition. So cognition is there, but there is nothing substantial that an object that you are cognizing. He does not conceive of an uncognized. Say someone has thought something and you haven't thought about it. You can you can think about what you haven't thought about. I couldn't think about that. I, if I have should I have thought about that I, I could do this? So you are again proliferating because you haven't thought about it. So the Tathagata does not conceive based on something he hasn't cognized, uncognized. And Vinya Tabbang Namanyati. So thinking that, okay, I should cognize, it is worthy of cognizing, so you are imagining something, you are attributing very importance, something importance to your cognition and you one can think, proliferate. There is no such thing for the Tathagata. Vinyatarang Namanyati, he does not conceive about one who cognizes. So there is no person who is cognizing. There is no thinker, even though thoughts are there. Probably you have heard about the book by Mark Epstein, Thoughts Without a Thinker. So he is a Buddhist uh, scholar as well as a, a Buddhist psychotherapist staying in US. He has published a book, Thoughts Without a Thinker. You can connect how he has taken the uh, Buddhist teachings. So there, the cognition is there, thoughts are there, you may even notice that, but there is no thinker behind it. There is no person who is thinking. So with this actually the, we can understand okay, how profound the Buddha is putting his uh, message, his teachings. So, yena yena hi manyanti tato tang hoti anyata. Tanghi tasa musa hoti mosa dhammang hi So, Buddha therefore mentioned, whatever the way you conceive, and what you have conceived becomes something different. It turns out otherwise. So, that indeed is its felicity. For the transient is of a false nature. So, whatever transient... So no point of we conceiving because it becomes something else. We think, okay, she is beautiful, but next moment she becomes not beautiful. We think that he is handsome, but next moment he becomes not handsome. We think, okay, something is permanent, this government is permanent, next moment it's being toppled. We think, okay, they are going to win the match, next moment they were bowled out. So likewise, so things can change even though we conceive. So with ourselves and the, the real phenomena, there is no any kind of an agreement. So therefore, the things what we conceive are wasting, waste of time. And basically it's a falsity what is uh, changing. But on the other hand, Amosa Dhamma Nibbana, Tadariya Satchato Vidu. Teve Satchabi Samaya Nichata Parinibhuta. So Buddha highlights here 
అమోసధమ్మంగ్ నిబ్బాణం బట్ నిబ్బాణ ఈస్ ఆఫ్ నన్ ఫాల్స్ నేచర్ ద నోబల్ వాన్స్ నో యాస్ ట్రూత్ త్రూ ద బ్రేక్ త్రూ టు ట్రూత్ హంగర్లెస్ దే ఆర్ ఫుల్లీ క్వెన్స్డ్ దెర్ ఆర్ నో ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ దెర్ ఆర్ నో పర్సన్స్ రాధ నాలెడ్జ్ ఈస్ దే ఆర్ వీ కెన్ సే అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఈస్ దే ఆర్ స్టిల్నెస్ ఈస్ దే ఆర్ సో you are one may be experiencing but there is no coming and going stillness is there so very much like uh, say would the mention here as so this is the nibbana as a true 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 refuge actually here we can say but there is attributing this to the the maximum level uh, we can say that is the Uh, the arahanta pala samadhi where the typical uh, six sense bases are completely ceased so one is in the supreme nibbana but on the other hand from uh, from the vipassana uh, practitioner's point of view one can say say even for a little period small period if you can experience tadanga nibbuti kind of a temporary nibbana even that is kind of something that we can find very interesting quite an eye opening experience where there are no thoughts even there are no any kind of uh, objects as such and you are in a complete stillness there is no any agitation in the mind there is no coming and going becoming present in the mind and there is no yearning desiring ex- expecting some kind of futuristic experience you are in a complete satisfied contented state so it's something very very interesting we can we can even uh, try to achieve how how we can experience that kind of a really still really really relaxed calm peaceful state of mind while we are experiencing such maybe uh, there is no any kind of personal involvement there is no any personal experience personal experience in the sense there is no person as such that you are experiencing you may not get the uh, sense of person sense of personality rather the experience is there merely an experience is there in a innocent way someone is experiencing but mere the experience is there but he may not feel the sense of a self while experiencing and uh, say there is no friction there is no any kind of an attachment so likewise we can see so how would the trying his best to give us the message or the pass us the message so okay this is the direction that we have to move forward currently we may not be have the we may not, we may not have the best form of nibbana the ultimate form of nibbana since we are not arahants but at least uh, say the direction which the buddha is showing us and particularly he highlights here the anattani attamani pasalokan sadevaka nimittam nama roopam smin idam satchanti manyate so we we have a very interesting uh, vipassana knowledge attributed here that vijnana and nama roopa that interrelationship so if we are able to understand the name and form the availability of name and form in our mind and without giving it any kind of an importance how about penetrating it and slowly abandoning it so that the mind become very clear unestablished and you have penetrated that instead of giving it some solidity giving it attributing it a person so these are the areas actually we can learn from this area from this team actually it's a very very profound and in a way somewhat challenging uh, kind of a theme but really eye opening and uh, with that i like to conclude today's uh, the sermon so the teaching uh, and it's a very interesting and really a profound way that buddha is putting it and now i like to open the session for questions thank you ben 
If anyone has questions, feel free to raise your hand or feel free to send them via the chat. Um, and I'll just provide a quick update. Last week, um, there was a question about Venerable Damajiva's retreat schedule in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, I did receive a, an email about the dates. Um, I just need to locate some details about how to register. So uh, look for an email hopefully within the next day or so with that information. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. And first one day. Yeah, seems nobody has a question. Everybody attain Nibbana. <laughs> <laughs> Wishing to attain Nibbana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, Ashini, feel free to ask your question. Yes. So, you know, so I have a general question that means in the morning today a neighboring house boy about 15 years old came and asked from me what is Nibbana <laughs> actually I, it is a very deep topic I don't know much about it but I had to give an answer and I said cessation of all the refinements mm -hmm. thereafter he asked what happens when somebody attains Nibbana so I at that time of course I don't know but as he is 15 year old and still studying in the school I told him that uh, when somebody is attaining Nibbana uh, the matter and uh, energy is detached forever mm -hmm. uh, so Aminas I don't know whether my answers are correct could you please give me some idea about that yeah I mean in one sense I mean fairly fairly a very good answer because uh, the cessation of all the defilements. So that's a very interesting answer. Tanha kyo nibbana. So that Buddha Buddha has emphasized tanha kyo nibbana. So the complete uproot of uh, uprooting of craving, and raga kyo dosa kyo moha kyo nibbana. So that's another definition given regarding to the nibbana. So the completely uprooting lust, hatred, and delusion. So that is the nibbana. So basically, if one is able to uproot completely the craving or in broadly the lust, hatred and delusion, that means one has attained Nibbana. So actually, there are two forms of Nibbana, some explained in the Dhamma, what we call as the Sopadisesa Nibbana and Anupadisesa Nibbana. The Sopadisesa Nibbana, still the, the body continues, the aggregates are continuous, but there is no grasping because no defilements are there. There is no attachment, no craving. As a result of that, there is no grasping. But the because of the momentum carried forward from our past, the aggregates are continuing till the death. But there are no defilements. As a result of that, there are there is no uh, grasping and proliferation uh, becoming going to happen. On the other hand, uh, at the end of the uh, after the death, I mean basically the uh, this completion, uh, what we call as the Anupadises and Nibbana, all the aggregates are also ceased, and uh, so the, the the fire has gone. We haven't given any fuel, so as a result of that, the fire has extinguished. Simple as that. So, I mean, you can give a kind of a simile to explain, it's according to the Dhamma, now it's very much like a uh, kind of a fire, that we are continuously supplying fuel, that's why we are continuing. But the moment that we stop supplying fuel, now it is sure that it's going to get extinguished. It may take some time because the, it was continuing, continu continuously it was uh, burning, but now only we have stopped giving the fuel, supplying the fuel. So some time, therefore, it will continue burning, but ultimately, surely, it will completely cease, completely extinguish. So that is what very much like the Anupadi says in Ibbana. Thank you very much, Sanjana. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to invite Geshan for the next question. Everyone, Saranaya Swami Nansu, and uh, thank you, Jennifer, for giving the opportunity and for you to check uh, the details about the retreat. Uh, would you be uh, 
yeah, you said that you are going to send an, us an email regarding about that. Uh, is it the West Virginia still the place, or is there a different place on that? West Virginia is also uh, there. Yes, yes. there's. Okay, yeah, yeah. West Virginia is also there, uh, Geshan, and there are several other places in the uh, US. So, uh, uh, probably uh, Jennifer will share it. West Virginia from 26th to 31st May, and New Jersey from uh, uh, 2nd to 10th June in US. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, because uh, I know uh, uh, we like to sort of participate on one of that right. uh, program. So, I mean, answer, I have a question for you, and uh, this is about the rising and ceasing, and um, it's about the, and uh, I think there are multiple ways you talk about this as well, and um, the Ativima or Nativima in Sinhala or Samudhya or Niroda in Pali, if I'm uh, accurate in that sense. So uh, my question uh, is for a yogi uh, who sort of uh, in the meditative mind or uh, use the meditation as a daily practice and seeing the arising, the thoughts arise in the mind. And the the way that I understood uh, for a while, uh, you see a pain arises, the thought, uh, maybe that thought it comes and then you see uh, a decay of that thought. But very recently I heard of Sabbe uh, the so maybe I can say it in English much better, I guess. Uh, the moment it uh, rises and the same moment it uh, it decays and uh, or it just uh, ceases. Uh, is that the normal uh, way how it happens or is there a, a progression to see that uh, ceasing happens? So that was my question and uh, I have the analytical answer for that as well but I just want to see your thoughts. Thank you. Yeah. Now, say for example, if you see a, a feeling, if you are experiencing a feeling, it depends on the sharpness of mindfulness, sharpness of your concentration. Uh, depending on that, probably you may see, okay, there is a, a painful feeling. Now it, it is arising. Now it is improving. It intensifying. Now it is decaying. Okay, now it has passed away. So after, say, three minutes, it has passed away. So this may be a fair experience that one may understand. But later you are further developing your mindfulness, sharpening your concentration, you are keeping your attention so precisely onto feelings. And probably you may understand, okay, I mean, they are not that long. So these feelings are so short and uh, say very instantaneous kinds of feelings are there and they are quite momentary. And they are quickly arising and passing away. But there is a bunch of them. There is a group of them. They are very much like happening simultaneously. A group of feelings. And uh, I perceive them as a painful feeling. So now you are, your understanding is more deeper. Rather than thinking that okay, there is a painful feeling. Existed for three minutes. Now you have uh, many minute painful feelings. They are quickly arising and passing away, but they give a perception that there is a <clears throat> kind of a painful feeling. So likewise, your understanding may grow as we continue the practice. So in that sense, quickly arising and quickly passing away, the everything are in kind of a transience, is something uh, that one may understand as may one continues one's practice. the same way that uh, you see the arising and at the same moment in time uh, you have to see uh, passing as well or cease 
or is this a, a you know is, is it like a coin uh, there is the head and the tails of the seeds and the uh, uh, sorry the rising and the seeding uh, on the same side of that coin but it's a series of coins together create that time frame and then for each of these coins you see the season ceasing sorry arising and the ceasing and arising and the ceasing and it is a collection of time uh, those kind of things that is that how one should see during the practice no, actually, actually as far as practical point of view geshan i think i mean uh, to the amount of the sharpness of the our sharpness of our faculties we may get that understanding so we can't say okay you have to see very very precise rising and passing away without that you can't uh, have the thorough understanding so giving such kind of extremist view i feel little too much too hard but the point is by seeing that if you are developing fair amount of understanding about the transient nature about the impermanent nature so that's the kind of uh, uh, result that we are expecting so i mean now say for example if you consider the scientist say phys- physicist so they have seen the transient nature in a more precise way than the than the the, the practitioners because they have so much sophisticated equipments and they have seen how how transient the the things are collapsing the matters are collapsing so they they have seen that but they haven't enlightened mm-hmm. so it is not that how precise how that you are going to that experience but the more eye opening way that you are experiencing it therefore for someone uh, maybe if he see things are passing away in a quite rapid manner so that would be enough for him to uh, understand things thoroughly and again and again repeatedly he is going through that he is experiencing that so as a result of that he is uh, developing this perception of impermanence thoroughly so it is not exactly the precision how how tiny it is rather i feel it is repeatedly you are experiencing and not only up to a one category of object but the last category of objects you may see that so that you are understanding become uh, more and more uh, we we then more and more uh, thorough broader so then the <clears throat> say that uh, detachment may happen the important thing is the detachment the important thing is that letting go now you don't want to hold things because you understood their impermanence so so therefore uh, for someone it may take long time for some another one it may take a little time so it all depends on our kind of personal uh, say uh, experiences and uh, say that's therefore i i i like to say a kind of a indefinite answer here rather than telling okay you everybody has to see so precisely so perfectly uh, i feel it's too hard to say like that thank you pante i think you answer so eloquently here because uh, think the outcome of this see is yes. the detachment exactly something that is the result of it uh, so you're not clinging anymore hmm. you see the impermanence of this and and if you see the detachment i think the result is there hmm. uh, that's how i should take it Correct. so thank you i think that yeah. is what i was looking for thank you very much yeah yeah thank you there on sunday so i have sent an email geshan please uh, check that also okay yeah. thank you yeah. Yeah. i yeah. do appreciate uh then there's strong interest about um the retreat that's uh-huh. coming up so right. i received a couple more written questions one right. is uh whether you know the US retreats are they going to be in english because um the two in canada will be in singhala correct uh 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 i am not much sure about that by the way mm okay. uh probably uh that can be known uh, maybe later 
you can ask that also from Janaka uh, whether they are going to have them in English. May, actually, the West Virginia retreat in, is in English. I am sure about that. Because that will be conducted joined with Bhante Gunratana. So that will be in English. Okay. New Jersey okay. one, I am not sure. Okay, yeah. I'll check with um, Janaka. Yeah. And also, are there any plans for retreats in Australia? Already finished. Actually, Bhante re- arrived Sri Lanka on last uh, second. Just arrived after participating about two and a half months in Australia and New Zealand. And uh, maybe he maybe plans uh, maybe again on uh, uh, December or end of November to visit there. Uh, I guess uh, Janaka would also have that information, right? No, Australia retreats he, he hasn't put here because he's only handling the US and Canada part. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Keshan, did you have a follow-up question? Yes. Uh, so, I just wanted to ask from Bante, when is Bante coming to uh, US? for a retreat, <laughs> not just Bhante Gunaratana, but um, uh, you Bhante, so I just want to know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We'll see, actually, I, uh, because since Bhante Dhammajeeva is frequently coming there, I felt that uh, no need I to visit there. Uh, so we'll see in the future. Yes, very good, because it is much easier to communicate ask the question, so I feel that way. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Okay, if there is no more questions, Jennifer, shall we wind up? Sure, Bhante. Okay, yeah. okay. Thank then you. today also we have participated here uh, discussing Dhamma and listening to Dhamma. And all the merits that we have accrued, we'll share with all the celestial beings, all past relatives and whoever in need of merits. And we wish these merits help us also to understand Buddha's teaching, attain path, fruition, Nibbana. We'll recite the traditional verses. Ittavata cha amhe hi sambatang punya sampadang sabbe deva anumodantu sabba sampat siddhya Ittavata cha amhe hi sambatang punya sampadang sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabba sampat siddhya Ittavata cha amhe hi sambatang punya sampadang sabbe satta anumodantu sabba sampat siddhya Aka satta cha bummatta deva naga mahidhika Punyantang anumoditva chirang rakhantu sasanang Aka satta cha bummatta deva naga mahidhika Punyantang anumoditva chirang rakhantu desanang Aka satta cha bummatta deva naga mahidhika Punyantang anumoditva chirang rakhantu mamparang Idang vo nyati nang ho tu sukita huntu nyata yo. Idang vo nyati nang ho tu sukita huntu nyata yo. Idang vo nyati nang ho tu sukita huntu nyata yo. Imina punya kame ne mame bala samagamo. Satang samagamo ho tu yavanimbana patia. Imina punya kame ne mame bala samagamo. Satang samagamo ho tu yavanimbana patia. Imina punya kame ne mame bala samagamo. Satang samagamo ho tu yavanimbana patia. Sadu, sadu, sadu.